again, Anthony Murphy from Bucks on Deck. Uh, thanks, thanks for hopping on here today to talk a little bit about, yeah, some some updates in the the minor league system, some some prospects, what they did this past week. Um, is there anything you know that the Pirates can look forward to? Right, this is kind of the the part of the show where hopefully there's well, some 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 future well, optimism here. We actually had some um, decent hitting performances last week. Hey. So, that's yeah, yeah, I mean that's a win. They were all oh. in the lower levels. They're all in the lower levels, so I don't know what that's going to do for the uh, the major league team this year. But they're ready. Yeah, there's, <laughs> Bring them yeah, up. <laughs> send them. <laughs> One of them is a catcher, or two of them is a catcher. Boom. The, boom. So um, uh, Garrett Forrester, he was a uh, second, third round pick last year. Um, struggled pretty pretty bad at the beginning of the year. It looks like he was struggling to adjust uh, to some like breaking pitches and, and, you know, usual stuff and all that got left behind in Bradenton because he's making the switch to catcher. So, they, you know, they left him in a Bradenton to kind of slowly work on that stuff. Really tough, uh, tough start last week, this past week, he kind of started turning things around. He had seven hits total, two doubles, uh, walked three times. Um, I wrote an article about him on, on Sunday, some stuff that he's, he'd been doing really well at the, at the plate. Um, it really seemed like he was trying to pull the ball a little bit too much and get out in front of the stuff and did a really good job protecting like the outer half of the plate, started setting stuff straight up the middle, uh, uh, going the other way. Like all, uh, both of his doubles were to uh, right field. He uh, hit them the other way. So that was really impressive, really impressive week from him. Um, the chase rate is like last, last I checked before it updated, it was like, uh, a elite level chase rate. Like it was like 13%. He was only chasing 13% of the time. Um, the zone contact has really improved over the last week or so. So looks like he's finally getting adjusted. So, and you know, there's like that, that added thing to trying to learn because he's never ca caught before. He has, he never caught in, in, in college. So learning that extra position, adding that on top of, you know, learning to hit at the pro level stuff like that. So it looks like it's starting to finally come around for him. So that, that was really good to see because he was a guy that like MLB pipeline even picked as a guy to like watch for at, at, they, they listed him as the first baseman, but they kind of picked him, him as a guy to watch. And, you know, he came out and kind of fell flat on his face at first. So. Is there any reason why they, they made that position switch? Like, so I know what, like that, it was it was curious at first, but then like Nola brought up that uh, some teams actually talked to him, like multiple teams talked to him like during the draft process about potentially doing that. So like I think he had caught some in high school or something like that previously. Uh, didn't do it in 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 college, but like it, it was just something that was like just like a random note that like hey some teams talked about. It. I guess the Pirates would have been one of them. And then I know uh, Tim on P two, he was the one that kind of talk to somebody inside the organization and, and they, they just, they tried it. They, I guess apparently they just kind of tried him out there and just like every catcher person that they have in the system just like had nothing but great things to say. He's done fairly well back there. Um, he's throwing out like 25% of the, the base dealers right now. Um, Call him up. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, he's working. He's yeah. So he, he's kind of getting there. He hasn't looked horrible beyond the plate and the, the bat starting to slowly come around. So. All right. So a little bit of good news, but yeah, it sounds like uh, as we talk about this organizational philosophy thing, he sounds like, he sounds like one of those very, guys that. Yeah. He, if, that, if like, you want to, if, if like, if you feel like the organization thing is to be like very patient and, and that, and that kind of stuff, you know, wait and wait for your pitches. Like he's very, the little bit that I saw from him last year got before he got hurt was very frustrating to me because like, I wanted to see him swing the bat just to kind of get an idea of what kind of hitter he was and that kind of stuff. And he just, he, he walked like 10 times in like 30 plate appearances last year, last year before he got hurt. Like he was on the spring breakout game. Like the only two at bats he had, he walked both times. So like he, he he's a guy that very well, like when he's going, like, I feel like he's, he's another hitter on that Bradenton team that could, like walk a hundred times in a season. Like he has that kind of play to wear awareness and stuff like that. And like, so far, like very small sample size, but like he's done very well, like oddly better 
when he's behind the count than he is when he's ahead of the head of the count. So like his and like the, the article I wrote, like of the hits that I pulled up, like four or five of them were with two strikes. So mm-hmm. like he he's a very good two strike hitter. He has a very good two strike approach and stuff like that. He gets put he puts himself in those positions a lot because he's trying to work the count and get deep. And you know, he walks quite a bit. He walked three times last week. Um but just when he gets to the two strikes, he, he doesn't really seem too phased by it, and, and he's been doing much better with it. So. Awesome. Um, yeah. What else offensively? Let's kind of stick with the let's stick with the offense. Um, what else offensively are we seeing throughout the system this past week? So, like, I know uh, his teammate down in Bradenton. I, I know I, we've talked about him on here before. Omar Afonso, a little bit of a scare with him for uh, missed a couple games. Looked like he had like a when he slid into second, he kind of like bummed his shoulder a little bit. He got pulled at, at, after that. So he missed a couple games there, came back over the weekend. He went four for 10 total, uh, three doubles, walked, walked, uh, drew a couple walks. Looks like they started to, you know, with Forrester there, they're starting to put a little more focus with Alfonso playing first base. He's kind of, he's kind of got like a pretty big frame. So I'm like, he did pretty well catching last year. So I kind of figured that maybe long term. He could stick behind the plate, but like with the way the frame's kind of going, I can kind of see like first baseman long term kind of thing. The exit velocity numbers kind of play into like maybe there being some added power there, you know, as he gets a little bit older. Um, so I, I think he could he could profile well there at first. Um, but yeah, solid week for him. Um, kind of, I guess kind of watch for the shoulder thing. Yeah. He's repeating the level. If there's, I guess, if we're, if we're looking at Bradenton, right, and we're just saying, "Hey, who, there's a lot of who of this, yeah, who of this group do you think has the best chance to to move to Greensboro the quickest?" Would you say it's probably Forrester, just from how advanced he is? I, I would say Forrester. I think I would say that the only reason that Forrester it started in Bradenton was because of the catching thing. If they were just gonna, okay, you're just gonna play third and first, they probably could have sent him to straight to Greensboro. Um, being a college kid, I probably would have preferred that. But, like, if you're going to work out – if you're saying, like, okay, well, we wanted to keep in Bradenton near the complex and everything like that, near some added coaching and stuff like that because of the catching, then, then yeah. Um, so, Forrester – I even believe, like, uh, Alfonso probably could, could, could get there fairly quickly to um, – they have a couple catchers in Greensboro that they kind of like, and like uh, Alfonso is still twenty. He won't turn twenty one until like right at the end of the season. So like, and he didn't like he kind of split time between Bradenton and the complex last year. So like he he doesn't have that much playing time in Bradenton. So um, I saw Tamar Homer. Tamar yeah. Homer. Um, yeah, yeah. I guess like Tamar's the. the uh, the, the, the kind of guy, especially, you know, you guys talk about, like, the hitting philosophy and everything like that. I went back, like, I, I have on my YouTube channel, like, every single plate appearance that he had streamed back in Bradenton it went right after he got drafted. And it kind of feels like it was this, it's been the same story. Like, it, like, I don't know how long it takes for you to implement your, your, like, your philosophy on hitting. I don't know if, like, okay, we draft you, this is what you do go go do it kind of thing but i i do kind of feel like for as okay as he played in bradenton and stuff like that there's always been a, some red flags with it with his game and I, I mentioned it in your guys's discord the other day like drafting drafting a kid or giving a kid, uh, prep kid a 70 hit tool at a you know before he even stepped foot in pro ball i feel like it's setting people up for failure anyways I mean, he was being compared to like Wade Boggs and Vlad Guerrero, and I think like Harold Reynolds said his his uh, batting practice remi- reminded him of like Ken Griffey Jr. and and so like like Just, oh, the comps yeah. that get thrown around on draft day are yeah, a little for, a little for, out for of a prep kid that has, you know like if it's a college kid then then maybe because he's he's pitched against you know more advanced competition but like this was a high school kid and. I, I think too, like going on the hitting philosophy thing. And I, I think there's the way that they've drafted too, I don't think it's done them too many favors. I think they've gone too heavy into the 
these guys have to hit kind of profiles. Like if they're not going to hit, they're not doing anything. Like Henry Davis, he was drafted for his bat. There was always questions about whether or not he was going to be able to catch. They, um, so like if he does, if he can't catch and he has to play first base, then he really has to hit, and that puts all the pressure on on the bat. And then hitting's hard in the majors. Like we saw Jackson Holiday completely struggle, and I and it's an easy argument to say he's a better hitter than anyone in the Pirates system. So if he's going to struggle, then like pe- people struggle. Um, and then Nick Gonzalez was second base, only, second base only. He hitting second base. He's got to hit to to make it. Tamar Johnson, second base. He's got to hit to make it. And you that kind is, of set yourself up is, for, uh, for failure. With, with that is a really, kind of yeah, that is a really good point. That the three hitters that they've drafted since Sherrington took over, none of them really play that. Well, it's not that they don't play the premier position, right? Because you could say Henry Davis yeah. plays the premier position. <clears throat> but does he play it well? But the question was, like, can he actually play it, right? Yeah. They're not drafting these, like, super toolsy center fielders and, and shortstops where it's like, okay, well, this guy's going to stick at center field. This guy's going to stick at shortstop. And then if he can do all these other things, he's a superstar, mm-hmm. right? Like even if Jordan he can't Waller hit, types. he's a yeah. – Yeah, even yeah. if he can't hit, he's going to be a plus <clears throat> defender – at a position that you really need a plus defender and they just haven't really prioritized defense in, in much that they've done. And like, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, yeah. that's evident on the major league team because they're like analytically one of the worst defensive teams in, in baseball. So. And that even goes for the, for their, their later picks too. And not that they're, they're super later picks, but you look at guys like Brannigan and Forrester and Lonnie white jr. Like these second, third rounders that they're taking too. like same, same deal. Like, and that Lonnie White Jr. is super athletic. Like he's, yeah. he, he can play oh, he, defense, he, right? He, he he's a he's a he's a plus defender in in, in center field. Yeah. He, he's got like a cannon arm. I mean, Brannigan's a really good defender as well. It's it's just that corner. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I I would I would make an argument that that Brannigan is the best defensive shortstop in the system. He he has the arm, he has the range and all that. I don't know if. I don't know if he sticks there mm-hmm. long term and stuff like that, but it's not too I mean, he seems more like a utility guy at this point and all that stuff. But gotcha. Speaking of Brand again, I mean, he seems to be off to a, the best start of any offensive player, probably outside, you know, the, Nick Gonzalez at AAA. Yeah. How's um how's how's he how's he doing? I know he's repeating Greensboro. Can we get him out of Greensboro here soon, or how much longer has he got there? I mean, I think I, I can't. There's really no one keeping him out of Altoona right now. I mean, you can you can put him at second or third, and and on there he um he struggled a little bit with with strikeouts this past week. Um, uh, you got you guys will um you guys will like this one. He uh, it started looking like he started to look for a little extra power this week. And then the strikeout started kind of going up a bit. Um, mm-hmm. I think he, he hit three home runs this past week against Greenville. Um, three home runs. Out. Yeah. Yeah. There was one game. He went like two for five and he had a home run, a double, and then three strikeouts. So yep. some of them were like, there's been some, like, there was like some questionable calls throughout the week in, in, in that series. Like I, I remember one game, uh, one of the Greensboro pitchers, he got squeezed like pretty tightly with the with the strike zone. So there there's some questionable strike three calls and stuff like that mixed in there. But yeah, it, like it, he's starting to figure it out. And like you, like obviously you can make the case because he's in he's in Greensboro again, and he should probably be in Altoona and stuff like that. But I mean, he didn't play that many games in Greensboro last year. And then when you consider how much he struggled with the swing and miss and struggled with it quite a bit in the Arizona fall league as well. Um, it's, it's progress. He's making progress. He's walking more. He's, he's looking more like a, uh, like a, someone who's going to bat lead off for you instead of um, like in the middle of the order. And he, he's, he's got double, he's got double plus speed. Um, the speed, I, I would say, I would rate the speed higher than I would the power at, at this point. So, um, I don't think he's going to hit for too much, too much power as he goes up. Probably be more like a, what, ten to fifteen home run guy in the majors kind of thing. 
but he's a guy who could steal close to 30 bases, played really good defense at second, short, and third. So, so kind of like Jared Triolo. Mm. I, I, would, I would say he has more power than Jared Triolo. Mm. Should have more power. More actual speed than, like, I, I always felt like Triolo's speed was more base running IQ kind of thing. Like, he knows when to go and how to go and that kind of stuff. Brannigan has more, like, natural speed than him. Okay. But, yeah, very, very close. Got it. Both Indiana high school, college people, weren't they? Yeah. Or, uh, no, yeah, Triolo was. Notre Dame. Yeah, no, Tri- was Triolo, uh, Triolo went to. Houston. Indiana. Houston, yeah. yeah Gors- Houston. Was Gorski Indiana? Gorski was. Gorski Indiana. was Indiana. Uh, right. Brannigan was uh, Notre Dame. Okay. Oh, so good. <laughs> um. <laughs> anything else offensively happening? Worth, worth um, sticking with the Greensboro, Charles McAdoo. Uh, he's starting to kind of he was he was kind of a guy to like he was a guy that a lot of people were talking about and and, and mentioning. He he's he has one of those profiles to like he I kind of assumed he was gonna do well in Greensboro. That like the real question would be like, okay, I'll let him kind of rake this year and kind of get comfortable to pro- let him get his full season in, and then like I'll, I'll really turn my attention to it once he hits Altoona kind of like those kind of players um, mm-hmm. hit a second home run of the season. One six for 20, couple RBIs, a little more strikeout than a little more strikeout this year than, than he did last year. Um, I think he struck out like once in each game over, over the week and stuff like that. Um, kind of like you're, He's, he's another one of like the hit first guys. Like he's gonna have to hit to, to go anywhere. He, he they have him bouncing around all over the place. He's mainly been playing third base. It's been okay, but like not like he's he's not like the next Triolo or or Branding in or or anything like that. He he he's gonna move up based on how well he hits, kind of thing. So. Got it. Okay. Um. Well, I mean, let's move, let's move over to the pitching side. That's it's. it's been the clear strength of the organization. Mm-hmm. Um, what, uh, as far as these pitching prospects go, who looked, uh, who looked good this week, who maybe struggled, who, uh, who looked really good. Well, no, I, I, I have to give a shout out to, uh, Sean Sullivan, my boy, Sean Sullivan. He, uh, he pitched another good week there. I, when Alex Stump had like a really good article on, on him the other day about how he's changed him change, you know, his arm angle and his approach and everything stuff. Re- really good stuff. It's worked. He's done really good this year. Um, what is it? He's only allowed one run in his last two starts, which has gone 10 innings total. Um, the strikeouts aren't, his strikeouts aren't really his, his thing. I think one of the games he had like, he, he pitched like five shutout innings and had one strikeout. And then I think this past week he had three. So not a big strikeout guy, but like he's performing in, in Altoona. He's done really good. He did fairly well last year in, in Altoona. Is doing good again this year. He was in. He was what is a non-roster invite to spring training. I think he was probably like the most. I would say probably the most surprising like spring training non-roster invitee. Um, so like, th- th- I think the Pirates kind of pick up on something maybe that maybe he can be you know like a back end piece or or just like even just like a depth guy or something like that. Um, yeah, yeah. Nola has a good point with that. Mm-hmm. Like. We we have we have a point to not talk like I mean I talked about nothing but guys before Altoona today but like it's the the real questions Altoona once they get there but um, yeah Sullivan he's looked good this year um, kind of doing his thing you know he's a command over stuff kind of thing he's going to hit his spots and induce weak contact and and you know that kind of stuff that you want to see out of a number five starter and Pirates have. Had good success with those kind of guys too. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah, I know he's definitely my, been someone to keep on keep on everybody's radar for a while now. Yeah, yeah. Um, Michael Kennedy, he's pitching, still pitching really well. Back to back games now with throwing at least five innings, not walking anybody, which was a big thing for him last year. So he's not walking anyone. He walked. Uh, he struck out six, I think, this past past time around. The the fastball he's he's putting in work with the fastball right now. I mean, like he's at he at only averaging ninety miles an hour with it, but like his his whiff rate with it is right at thirty percent. Which if you if you get at thirty percent with your whiff rate for a fastball, that's 
above average to to pretty you know it's pretty good and then when you factor in the fact that he's only throwing at 90 miles an hour so like it's doing doing pretty good work with that um mm -hmm. the slider the slider is really good he kind of uses the he pitches backwards a lot so he uses the slider a lot to to get you know get things going he'll jump up ahead and they count with that and then um kind of finish guys off with the the fastball so it's, it's interesting seeing them work and stuff like that and then you know yeah. he's got the the Cortez hesitation thing going still. Right. <laughs> if it works again, if it works. I mean, it works. It's working. It's working for him. But yeah, two, um, two back to back, really nice starts for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's been good to see. I know, I know the, 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 he's 19, he'll be 19 all year in Bradenton. So they'll, they'll still manage his workload a, a little bit and stuff like that. I wouldn't expect him to go any further than the, uh, the five innings in a, in a game this year, but it looked like they're being a little more aggressive, which with the pitch counts in Bradenton there. So I think they, they've really started to ramp guys up, up there. I think even like Christian Curtis threw nearly 80 pitches uh, on Sunday. So they're starting to get the pitch counts up there. So we'll start really get a good idea for how some of these guys do in the, in the rotation. Yeah. Well, I guess Skeens. Cool, cool. You want to talk about Paul yeah. Skeens a little bit? Yeah, sure. Close, close, with <laughs> close, close out with him. Yeah. Um, I mean, he basically this was he, he gave him a run finally. Yeah. Um, yeah. Gave him a run. Yeah, keep him down. Um, <laughs> this week though, this is his first week. Let's kind of do a week preview. He goes Tuesday, Sunday this week, doesn't he? As long as they don't try to do anything funny with because what is it? Indianapolis got rained out or weathered out the right. last three games. They haven't played yeah. since they haven't played since Thursday, I think. So, I, don't I think th Ben said I, that's not going to affect him. I like I I wouldn't like this is Paul Skeens. Everyone else can kind of wait in in Indy kind of thing. So I wouldn't mess with this thing. I I can't imagine a scenario where they do, but that is something that if they wanted to get cute or whatever like that and find an excuse to keep push things back a little bit more. I mean, you have. You haven't, you haven't played a game since since Thursday. So, but yeah, this should be his first time going Tuesday, Sunday. So, first time actually on four days rest. Um, he got up to what seventy five in between seventy five and eighty pitches last time around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Summer, it was so. definitely his, it was his longest outing innings wise, longest outing pitching wise, pitching wise. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm curious to see how this goes because I think we we talked about it. Like they did that they did this thing with Jones too, his first time pitching on on four days rest, where they really limited him that 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 yeah. second time. They, so. Yeah, generally generally they do that, um, especially in, in, throughout the system. Once expect, like uh, Greensboro, I think the guy who, who's pitched on Sunday, they've only thrown like forty to fifty pitches. That's that's it. They're a lot younger and a lot less experienced at, than uh, someone like schemes obviously but yeah they throughout the system it's really kind of scaled back the, the sunday start usually so i would imagine yeah. like they've been slowly building him up and stuff like that i wouldn't imagine that this would be a week to where it's anything higher but if you can consistently get maybe, maybe like keep him at the 75 on tuesday and then 60 to 70 in game on sunday Maybe maybe something along the lines of that. So like mm -hmm. I wouldn't expect this week to be like a build up to like reach like an extra threshold, but this is probably a bigger milestone for him at compared to getting the pitch count up higher. So. Yeah, I mean you, you think of uh, the boxes you need to check, right? Um, <clears throat> this is like the last box he needs yeah. to check. I think one thing that we saw this past week that that we hadn't seen, he really mixed in all of his pitches this last start. Mm -hmm. um, he was really kind of – he was throwing everything before, but he was really just kind of leaning on that the fastball slider for the most yeah. part up until this point. This past week we saw that that splinker a whole lot, um, especially against righties. It looked really, really good. Uh, throw, throw in some change-ups, um, throw in uh, – I don't know if it was just StatCast getting messed up, but I think StatCast had him throwing like six different pitches <laughs> this past well, week. Well, he, he – I remember there's a – I can't remember who he talked to in a – all that but he said like he uses like the same grip for like a slider but depending on how like he gets ahead of the pitch for more or he stays behind it he can like manipulate it to look more to get like more horizontal run 
and, and stuff like that. So, so sometimes I think one of the pitches that picked up as a sweeper. So like, you know, obviously the sweeper gets more horizontal run. Um, so like, it's all the same grip technically, but it's, it's, it's how he manipulates it out of his hand and stuff like that, that causes it to like pretty much break the stat cast at this point. Like, yeah. So. Yeah. Um, all right. Are these the last two starts for schemes in Indianapolis? Just your guess. Is he done after I mean, this week? I, I mean, I can, I can, I can be the guy that like, I can build up some optimism or I can kind of just like bring down <laughs> hopes again. This is just your guess. This is this is your guess. I, this is your your best. I guess. mean, I think I've mentioned on here, like like we're in uncharted waters with with like pitching prospects at this point because, like I said, like who would have ever expected Jared Jones to make the opening day roster? Right. So, yeah, sure. This this could be the last time that that Skeens is in the minors, but like also I can see a scenario to where he's still still down there for for some more time i mean it's it's just one time doing the four day thing like you could make a case that maybe you want to see him do the double start in a week twice before you you bring him up and then so that's that's like a whole nother month or something like that so politician murphy over here yeah see jim i'm not the only one that sees both sides (laughs) yeah that was that was a ben sherrington answer just a bunch of words without answering the question (laughs) Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. At least, at least Anthony threw enough. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah sure. <laughs> All right. Well, do you got anything else for 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 Murphy Denardo? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. We're good. Just as I think as Denardo's sick of me being on here. I'm absolutely <laughs> tired of you. <laughs> that, appreciate you. Yeah, appreciate you hopping on here early in the morning and talk about the uh, Pirates minor leaguers. I know it's uh it's it's a really good recap of the last week, good preview of the week ahead. So yeah, appreciate it, Murphy. Again, bu- Bucks okay. on Deck is where you can find them. So make sure you're make sure you're subscribed to that Substack. Um also every Tuesday, you and Nola are doing a prospect podcast. So if hey, if you're listening to this, you like podcasts, Bucks on Deck podcast comes out every Tuesday. It's it's just strictly prospect talk. So, but if you're into that kind of thing, can't get better. Uh, can't get a better prospect podcast out there. Absolutely, I appreciate that. Yep. 